Welcome to Season 3, Episode 4 of the 6Ms of Manufacturing Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Temple. It all starts with an idea. Did you know that microbusinesses are the largest percentage of our manufacturing population? So how does someone go from a good idea to a full-scale business? In this episode, I'm talking with Phil McCright, founder of Beer and Napkins, and Joey Lohman with Synergy Mill, a makerspace in Greenville, South Carolina, to learn more about the entrepreneurial journey from ideation to execution. Well, gentlemen, I just want to welcome you both to the show and give you a chance to introduce yourself. So, Phil, I'll let you start. If you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself and and kind of you know about your organization. Great. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Phil McCright, and I'm a principal of McCright Associates. I'm a consultant by trade. I work with SMEP uh, occasionally here and there. Uh, great organization. Thank you for all your support of South Carolina. Just want to plug that in. So. Um, I am the founder of Beer and Napkins. It's an, an informal ideation group that really focuses on building community and ideas in third places. So I'm um, excited to talk a little bit about that in our partnership with Joey. Yeah, awesome. And Joey? Yeah, well, hey, th- thank you so much for inviting me on the, to the show. It's just like super awesome. Don't get to talk very much very often. So this is a good time to get out. But yeah, we run a Synergy Mill Makerspace. It's a fab lab you've heard of the MIT Fab Lab concept, we're an actual Fab Lab. It's basically a big room with tools in it. People can come in and make whatever they want. Welding tools, carpentry tools, 3D printers, laser cutters, all of those creative creative tools, sewing machines, vinyl cutters, those kind of stuff. And we are a nonprofit community workshop. Uh, anybody can walk in off the street and say, hey, I need to fix a lamp or I'd like to learn welding. Uh, we just help, we help all levels from uh, a hobbyist to somebody who is an experimenter, an inventor. We've, we've helped uh, uh, about 14 or 15 small businesses start up that spun out. Uh, so we're, we're just a resource at that level of uh, uh, hobbyist to the uh, entry level uh, product development cycle. That's really awesome. I'm really, I'm really excited to dig into this whole topic matter because to me, entrepreneurship is really the genesis of a lot of our small manufacturers. You know, obviously our focus is on manufacturing and we have a lot of very, very small enterprises and they start with someone who has an idea, a skill, and they're looking to monetize and scale. But what happens in between ideation and execution is is kind of a black box, right? So I'm really excited to dig into that and understand a little bit more and share that with with our listeners, especially if they are thinking about those opportunities and don't know how to navigate this ecosystem. So I'm so glad to have you both on here because I think you represent, you know, both sides of that opportunity. Let's talk about beer and napkins in general. I mean, kind of what what's the premise behind beer and napkins? I mean, what's it about? What does it deliver? Can we get into a little bit more detail about that and kind of discuss that some more? Absolutely, Adrian. The origin story of Beer and Napkins was my brother and I just sitting at a, a local bar and talking about where the best ideas come from. This is around 2006. And um, as you could probably aware, be aware of, um, the whole mythology of business startups about uh, scribbling on a napkin just b- become pretty pervasive and stuff. But we thought about that around 2006 and around 2010, we got uh, a few of my colleagues together to do some pro bono consulting in a pub. So basically we've got a, an individual who was needing some support. So we just kind of converged on a pub to kind of brainstorm ideas. Over the last uh, 10 plus years or so, we, we have pivoted some number of cases. We've done pitch sessions in an early stage before even with pitch sessions were done in uh in the upstate. So we really kind of navigated to the entrepreneurial ideation and bringing those pitches to the pubs. And slowly we gravitated toward more uh, community-based design, doing design thinking sessions within the pub itself. So really to kind of spur ideation around community needs and other uh, other initiatives. Fast forward to this past year, uh, we wanted to really focus on really nurturing the ecosystem, the startup ecosystem. So we were supporting a lot of the uh, next um, uh, firm and start. So we brought in a lot of the uh, 10 at the top uh, individuals who really a great organization. So we wanted to be a kind of a, a catalyst to really communicate to the public 
what these services are and kind of bring them together. So like you said, there's so many out there. We felt beer and napkins is, is a way to, you know, bring it in an informal environments to really communicate in a relaxed setting to really nurture that environment. Um, again, fast forward and we'll get into how Joey and I met. So I just want to kind of give an origin story how Joey and I met. Um, my brother, I was working on a TEDx Greenville uh, project and I needed some uh, technological, technological guru to really help me fulfill a vision to support TEDx and Joey's name came up. So that's that's how we started together, tinkering together, supporting uh, some interactive uh, kind of events at TEDx. And uh, we just became friends and we've collaborated over, Joey, you can remind me of my memory, but maybe seven years so or more. So I really enjoyed our, our, our collaboration, our brainstorming. And to this day, we still get together. And uh, when we get a good chance to go to the pubs and uh, kind of hash some ideas out. So again, we've kind of gravitated to a support organization and really a portal into ideation, a more convergent thinking as uh, as gets into more Joey divergent to get the ideas into play. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So hopefully that uh, shares a little insight about beer and napkins. Yeah, so it sounds like it's been kind of an evolution, right, too? Because, I mean, you said it was kind of a community focus, and then it migrates more to the startups and, and helping them with some of some of that development and finding those next steps, right? So it's, it's it sounds like it's been an evolution. I mean, what are you, for both of you, because you're, you're both servicing the, the entrepreneur side of it, I mean, what are you seeing in that? I mean, where are people coming from? Are people coming with new and different ideas? Are they just coming with innovations of existing things that are going on? I mean, what kind of things are you seeing in the landscape and entrepreneurship and where people are right now. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of small business that crops up. But again, you know, those those initial phases are very, very critical, right? It's 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 hard to kind of keep that going. So what kind of trends are you seeing? What things are happening right now with entrepreneurship and people that are reaching out to you guys for for assistance and support? Joe, you want to take that? Yeah, well, you know, there's been a, a surging of attention that's been brought to it in the last couple of years. So I I I grew up in Kansas City. Actually, when, when I was in school, my office was across the street from the Kauffman Foundation for Entrepreneurial Research. So, and my first job was in uh, the Center for Business Innovation. I was a, a research assistant. So, I've, I've been in this kind of thing for, and I'm an old guy now, since the early mid 80s. And what I saw in Kansas City happening, uh, I was a founding member of the Entrepreneurs Club, of Kansas City, back in the day. And so, you know, I moved here to Greenville. And in the last few years, I've seen the same kind of path taken. With Greenville's surge into, you know, Greenville starts the Hill Institute, uh, next, next, next gen. There's all of this push towards opening up these opportunities and identification of, uh, of an entrepreneurial ecosystem, and it's just blossomed. And so the opportunities for awareness of it have just gone great. I mean, we had the a thing to the level of like the ball game last night was the start startup Greenville uh, night of the ball game. And, and so now we're taking entrepreneurship to, to the entertainment venue, right? So it, there's a lot of attention that's being brought to it, which means that there's a lot of people that go, oh, well, maybe I could, I could do something. Oh, there's a place where I could go learn things. Or there, where, where can I go and take these ideas? And the cool thing about Beer and Napkins is Beer and Napkins helps funnel those people into finding those resources. And then for us, the resources that we have we see people uh, at all levels. I have a lady that uh, has invented a trash can device uh, that she's applied for a patent on. So she's we're building her prototype there in the shop. I have a guy that uh, has developed a toy for challenged youths. And it's uh, basically you step on the, the little thing and the ball goes up and, then, and, and they can catch the ball or hit the ball or whatever. And this is, it's great fun. I think it's great fun too. So there's some development of some simple things. We have people that are... Uh, hobbyists that are discovering that they can make a thing and then sell it on Etsy. And so all of the pathways to make money are pathways to get products out or get uh, their their things out, products out. All of those things are now coming together. Now you have the Etsy's and the and the PayPal's and you know all of the payment structures are available. So everything is kind of kind of growing all together. The, now we can put all of these pieces together where someone can take an idea and make a thing, not just some software or something like that. We can actually do some physical product development. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I mean, 
Phil, with with beer and napkins, those those initial phases when they are coming to you guys and you're helping to to nurture that journey and get them to that next phase to actually do some prototyping or or some type of engineering and design. I mean, you know, what kinds of things are you guys working with people on? What, what's the stuff they come with that they're like, I'm just really help me get this together, like get it, get my arms around it. What what kind of things is beer and napkins doing right now actively with some entrepreneurs? I think that the first thing is uh, what we we identified, and, and I'm going to give Kevin Weir of the Small Business Association really uh, uh, advocation for, because he really enlightened us on this first area of uh, the needs. He, he enlightened us on uh, the um, Small Business Innovation Research Group, the program where it talks about getting your product into a phase one situation where you have an idea about your product and it can actually have a technical foundation. That's a phase one what we really wanted to navigate in beer and napkins is this phase zero, the pre-phase of getting you know, your product solidified. As Joey talked about when you prototype it, beer and napkins wanted to kind of get a foundational element so you can get to this phase one per se. And then you get up to um, uh, the other phases where you can get funding and really be prepared for some of these uh, cohorts that are in the ecosystem. Because what happens, kind of prefacing a lot of this stuff we're talking about, is um, they, they have an idea and they get to the point where they spend a lot of money on prototyping and other things and they have no customer base. So we really wanted to educate the the startup, the, the guys, and back to our persona, we wanted to really target a lot of the folks that are in more of the rural and suburban areas instead of the central the central Greenville or the urban areas. We wanted to kind of reach out those guys who are in um, uh, the working person who's in, say, uh, one of the BMW suppliers who's working on robots or uh, their maintenance and they find some idea they want to kind of uh, work through. So that's where, you know, where we beer knack is to kind of be that portal to bring them in and then say, Hey, we've got a pathway that you can, you've got opportunities to work to get your prototype and really vet that out. So we, we've worked with a, a number of ex uh, TTI folks uh, um, and uh, Ryobi folks and uh, things that's really started some product development and really to getting their ideas and really supporting this, this support mechanism where we can bring those individuals in. So we've had a number and of course, Joey's had a number that's come through beer and napkins and we passed them off to uh, uh, them to really do that prototype. Now you talked about, you guys have done some, some partnerships and work together on some different initiatives together more recently. Can you talk a little bit about maybe some of those, you know, success stories or things that are in process where you guys are kind of handing off and collaborating on things to help out some of these folks take it to the next level? Yeah. Um, so uh, so let's start with uh, Joey. We want to mention some of the, the things that you've got going on from a beer napkins aspect. Yeah. Uh, so the cool thing about the partnership with, with Synergy Mill and Beer and Napkins is that Beer and Napkins is democratizing ideation, I think is is the way that Phil likes to put it, and and opening up opportunities for people to, to sit down and talk about things and acknowledge that they have good ideas. And the, uh, the partnership that we had uh, here recently is building a system of gathering ideas and sorting them out and getting people channeled to the best area that would help them the best. And uh, we came up with a, with a, it's a, it's a physical system of note taking. Uh, we're using uh, beer coasters to help gather ideas. And then the high tech part uh, kicks in where you can submit those ideas uh, via QR code and some other, other parts. And then AI takes over and does some sorting and some checking and some, all those kinds of AI things that AI is good at. And then all of a sudden now as support organizations now we can ask some very interesting questions about the data and the ideas and the people that we that we've collected of things like uh, where should we have a uh, a beer and napkins event on what topic where in the city or in in the upstate how can we get together you know what what are the popular ideas that are going around where are the things that we can hand to other support organizations and so the partnership between us as as a makerspace i don't i don't see the front facing people, as many people as Phil sees, or the people that Phil sees. 
So the multiplication of that is very powerful in getting ideas through to be developed. Just add that. Thank you, Joey. And uh, we partnered with uh, Next uh, uh, and did part of their cohort. And we did a session, we called it Napkins to Prototype, where we really focus on what I just mentioned uh, about looking at the customer, refining their product features and other things. So we had about two or three individuals in that cohort that really went through our program to really focus and hone in on that viability of their product and really vetted that. We were really excited about that opportunity. So with something like that, in partnership and being able to, like you said, formulate formulate a plan for the idea and help them to sort of put that together and then put it in action. You know, ideally the the deliverable or the goal is to kind of get them ready for that next phase to perhaps seek funding opportunity to to start moving forward with it. Is that really kind of what we hope to see coming out the back end if someone is really looking to have a business idea, right? I mean, I know you said there's there's obviously the hobbyist side of it too, but there's also people looking to maybe create, you know, a, a business long term. Is that kind of the end goal for a lot of these folks by following that particular process? Absolutely. And I think building these handoffs to these these other uh, other platforms and other ecosystem partners is important. I think really uh, linking up and saying, OK, we've got a whole cohort that you can you can uh, really nurture to the next phase. So we really want to be the front end. And as Kevin Weir from SBA mentioned, he, he said there's this big gap between that 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 really don't know about these resources and how to go about and getting these ideas vetted enough and give them the, the, some type of competencies to go to this next level. And that is our really goal, you know, through, you know, the ideation aspect of that and then refining those ideas and really vetting those customers so they'll have a good package to deliver as they go to these other platforms and eventually hopefully commercialize and scale later down the road. Again, we want to save a lot of the individuals. We've heard so many stories. They spent thousands of dollars of their own money in these prototypes only to be let down and they really cannot commercialize. So we really want to, I guess, mitigate or de-risk that situation, in our aspect, and really contribute to those individuals to save them money, save them pain in the future, and really be prepared to really plug into SMEP when they get ready. Looking forward to any future as we kind of build out and I know Joey's been a little bit more involved in really building those relationships with all the ecosystem partners, and especially he's been on the board of uh, uh, 10 at the top and some of the entrepreneurial groups there, which is really county spanning. Um, so we, we're pulsed into a lot and I really want to give kudos to um, Craig Sharton. He's been a very helpful. He's part of the 10 at the top there and been very supportive of the beer napkins and synergy mill uh, collaboration and it's ongoing. And maybe, Joey, you can share some of the, the stories or connections about some of the forms and things you've been involved in as part of that connection of what we're trying to build. Yeah, yeah. Joey, I mean, tell us about that, because um, I'm actually kind of curious how with what you're doing specifically, how you're how you're plugging in with all of these other folks, because like Bill said, there's so many ecosystem partners and how are you kind of making that connection and keeping that momentum going with what you guys are doing? Yeah, you know, the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem is, it's one of my my favorite topics. And I, I've, I have to be careful because I'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go into, we'll, we'll go into different ways to solve this, this problem. But what I've discovered is it comes down to, to relationships and conversations. Uh, uh, just to be clear, I wasn't on the board of, of Ten at the Top, but I was on a uh, committee that they had that was uh, helping define at the time. This was back in I don't know, 2019 or sometime uh, to help define what the entrepreneurial system looked like and how it was supposed to work and what how do we define the relationships and do we develop a calendar common calendar? Is there how do we share information? All of these kinds of things. Uh, but I think that it comes down to having conversations and and developing relationships. I don't think in 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 Greenville we're still. We're still developing that. Uh, we aren't at the level of sharing KPIs and and those kinds of things yet. But 
Uh, I mean, some some groups may, but as for Synergy Mill, what what we're doing is establishing pathways to be able to hand off people to other organizations and developing those relationships of who do who do you know? Uh, it's and it's really it's really not what you know, and it's not who you know. It's who knows you is the real key to this. Is who can pick you out of a crowd? It has you at top of mind. Is it somebody that has? You know, people are the gateways to investment monies and they're gateways to other people. And so having developing relationships is how that happens. And so I have focused, uh, you know, my efforts on making friends and making friends in as many resource uh, resource organizations as I can, because I know that, you know, as you extend that trust and you extend that friendship, that it's going to come back. And so being able to hand off entrepreneurs, hand off ideas, hand off, you know, it, it, it gives it gives some ebb and flow to the ecosystem. So someone is not just static. They actually have places to go. They have places to develop. And I just have to mention here that it is very difficult to develop products. It's very difficult to sit down with an entrepreneur or sit down with somebody and guide and shepherd them into realizing what they have is not going to work. And it's, it's, an, it's just not going to be a thing. As Phil mentioned, if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business. If you don't have an exit plan, you don't have a structure that you can start from. There's there's things that people just, they get stuck on, hey, I've got this great idea and everybody's going to want one. And that's the hard part of this, of this t- help open up people's eyes that the magic that they have is not in the product that they have, but the magic is them. The magic is, you know, hey, burn through that initial idea that's not going to work and put your mind to something that is that is going to work so maybe you know a business is going to fail 95 percent of businesses fail within whatever years or whatever but entrepreneurs don't fail they keep coming back and they keep doing it over and over and over again so we want to find those people and and educate them and give them a pathway and so that's why the the entrepreneurial ecosystem is a absolutely necessary thing develop those relationships where we can pass people and they have resources that they can go to. Just was just kind of add on to Joy's statement about those relationships. We have kind of actively looking at building those formal, informal um, uh, uh, connections with Next and Hill Institute and the platform and Greer. There's all these other ones that we're actively, as, as Joy said, there's conversations and building that so we can send them to to whatever appropriate program that's necessary there. I do want to mention other partners that are more informal, like I want to give shout out to Pam Wood Brown and Jim Ciella of OpenWorks, which is a co-working space that we work really closely with, with the beer and napkins uh, in, in Synergy Mill. Uh, napkins to prototype. And they house a lot of number of other collaborative groups, such as Hack Greenville, which is a coalition of uh, informal conversations around programming, app development, and other type of uh, areas in the technological realm. So we are really actively kind of building a good network between, you know, of course, Joey's uh, physical product development, but app development as well. So that, again, I can't say enough for Jim and Pam for their support of, of looking of how we can leverage all these resources out there to prepare those entrepreneurs. And uh, again, a lot of those folks come from that realm and it kind of cross pollinates between the beer napkins and uh, Synergy Mill folks. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out because it's so, there's so many elements in there. Again, partnering with SBA uh, and the other formal organizations to really kind of drive them to really communicate more, give them that nuggets of knowledge. And that's where we are, are at now, so. Yeah, you're so I mean, I know your organizations are primarily in the upstate. Do you see that there's an expansion beyond where you guys currently are in the footprint of Greenville upstate area? Do you have people engaging with you, communicating and brainstorming, but maybe coming from some of those surrounding areas outside that radius of the upstate so far? Uh, From a beer and napkin side, we're focused on the upstate tent at the top, if you will. We feel that that's the best skill at this moment, just to kind of work with the counties at hand. And there's a lot of opportunity in some of these smaller um, uh, Lawrence, uh, uh, up, up 
north and around the south and around those areas there that they're really interested in really Greenwood and some of the other areas that really feel that they need to nurture some things and they're growing. You can see a lot of potential in some of these outlying counties there. Um, it would probably be a little stretch to go to lower state, um, mm -hmm. but we want to really kind of focus in on the, uh, the sphere of influence, if you will, where we can kind of connect. And again, like Craig Sharton, uh, is kind of pulsing a lot of those areas there in the upstate. Joey. Yeah, you know, the initial uh, vision for Synergy Mill was that it would be a network of makerspaces because once you set down one of these makerspaces or a workshop in a community, you kind of draw in lines about who's going to show up. We we're in downtown Greenville and it's somebody from Spartanburg or Marietta or Athens or wherever probably not going to show up. So having, taking what our idea and kind of essentially franchising it and, and putting these uh, facilities in communities spreads our, our network out. And then in, there are, are maker spaces all over the, the state in Charleston and uh, uh, Columbia and some other, other spots around town, uh, around the state that we have the potential to network with and, and be able to pass people and pass information and pass resources back and forth. Uh, but the initial vision for Synergy Mill was that we would go into other communities and establish uh, maker spaces uh, to serve those communities so people wouldn't have to travel, uh, you know, two hours or whatever to, to get to a maker space. So that's, that's been our strategy. As far as uh, beer and napkins goes, what we, we love about beer and napkins is that ideation happens everywhere and wherever, you know, in a, in a bar, in a restaurant, at home, in a school, all of those places and beer and napkins methodology goes out after those and it gathers those people together. And so it's it's reaching into the community actively, uh, I think, that is the other end of that bridge, right? So you've got people that are looking for resources and then you have beer and napkins that is reaching out the other side. And that's, that's a powerful uh, methodology to get ideas through. Absolutely. You know, I, I was I want to go back to what we were talking about a little bit with the the ecosystem because I think it's so terribly important to talk about what's what's happening and what's maybe missing. Um, and and I, I've told you gentlemen this before is you know for for us as an organization we're, we're a nonprofit obviously focused on manufacturers and a large percentage of our manufacturing community is is extremely small businesses I mean micro businesses if you will but one of the things that we run into is is we will have people that are really early startups probably not ready for our services at the at the phase of business that they're in and you know we serve as a connector much like you talked about it's it's about knowing who else does what to support that business or that effort or that initiative and, and pointing them and making connections. I mean, we, we really try and serve as a connector, but to me, it feels like there's a lot that's misunderstood about all of the resources. And I think that goes beyond obviously entrepreneurship, right? I mean, we're South Carolina is, is resource rich in my opinion. I mean, we've, we've got so many resources. It's just unbelievable. And we're very business focused. Um, but it feels like a lot of times things aren't very visible and people don't know what's available to them. So even some of the things that you're bringing up in the, the regional area of Greenville, and, and obviously there are similar organizations statewide, then there's state resources like SBDC, SBA. Um, you know, what's your feel? I mean, do you, do you feel like when you meet some of these folks and you're working with these different people, do they have any idea what was available to them? I mean, is, is it just one of those things that we're just not getting the word out there? I mean, where, where are we with that? Because it feels like sometimes it's, People can't find what they need, and it's relying on individuals like like you, like us, to say, oh, "Now go that way." You know, this person talk to that. What's your perception on that? What have you really seen, kind of out there with these different folks that you're working with? From my perspective, I think where they get stuck on scaling is the manufacturer. Well, if it's a product, right? Mm. So uh, is um, supply chain stuff. They got a product and they want to expand. We'll get to the point where the SMP can help them, right? Is getting that source. How do you manufacture it to scale? How do you get uh, a higher level of volume in a thing? So that's one of the biggest challenges as we work with some of the some of the ex uh, TTI guys and in understanding where they can manufacture things, you know, in more lower costs or some other things where they can really get this uh, a skill there. That's the biggest challenge from my perspective to get to that level, you know, from a small 
to a larger uh, is is how to 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 really uh, build that efficient uh, uh, manufacturing of that product. So that again, that's a big challenge. But uh, through again through networks and those conversations and getting that point, because they'll stop in their tracks if they can't make any more. I mean, it, it's just so hard. You know, it, it's expensive. Uh, they can't get the cost down. That is some of the biggest challenges from my perspective. What about you, Joey? What do you think about the whole ecosystem and visibility of resources? And what have you seen? Yeah, the, again, uh, that entrepreneurial ecosystem, I view it as an anthropological, sociological problem to solve, uh, which means that uh, it's all about people and how people interact and how people change, exchange information. But what I've seen, and there's a spectrum, there's, there's people all the way at the, you know, just common people in town, the culture of Greenville the culture of a city, there are still pockets. It's very divided, uh, very siloed pockets of information and, and silos of cultures and silos of what, where people are comfortable. They aren't really going out and looking. I've, I've had, I've had people come to me and Synergy Mill has been around for eight years. I've had people come to me and say, I had, I had no idea that Synerg that, that, that Greenville had a makerspace. And I asked them, well, did you ever Google you know, makerspace in Greenville. They were like, well, no, I never thought to do that. You know, so there's that level. People didn't know that they needed to, to, you know, that they didn't know. And then all the way up to the other end of, I think there's still, people are protective of the networks that they have. And, and rightly so. I mean, we're still competing for customers on some levels. There are still, we're competing for monies. We're a nonprofit as well. And, you know, somebody who they have limited number of dollars that, that we're asking for money. Are they going to go to me? Are they going to go to you? You know, so so there is a mentality up there, out there that the resources are limited, but that's still pervasive in, in the ecosystem. And we're at a level now, I think we're, we're beginning to see that. And we're beginning to see how that if we open up and how we, if we share that, that those that information can get out as far as tackling how to get you know break into these these uh, silos of of cultures and peoples and social groups uh, you have to do the hard thing and the hard thing is you go meet them and you go shake their hand and you go say hi and you go introduce yourself and that is very very difficult to do because you've heard of this pandemic thing right everybody was like stuck inside for a couple of years there's there's that there's you know, cultural things that are preventing us from having those conversations and getting together. And so we'll be, you know, we're unknown. Uh, SMEP, I know, it's same thing, right? You're still trying to get that word out. Uh, we're still mm -hmm. trying to get that word out. And it's doing the hard thing of going and meeting and talking and sharing and sharing stories that is going to open up these opportunities for people. And that's hard to do. And it takes a physical presence at those pubs and breweries and you gotta go other, where people are right you go where people out. are and and you share the news and phil has done he's figured it out he's got a methodology with beer and napkins on how to get people together he's got a, a conversational methodology that we talk about strategic doing is one of those methodologies that we use uh the ideation that that he uses to help open up those pathways and and get those messages out and then the light bulb comes on for people and, and then their journey starts Let's, let's talk about timeline for a second, because really what I what I want to come from this, especially this episode, is we know that there are a lot of people out there, you know, that have an idea or have started down a path and are maybe a little a little shaky on where to go next. And I'd love for them to feel like they know kind of what that next step should be or if they need to back up a little bit first before they move forward. Right. I mean, make good decisions. Let's talk about just very quickly the who's the right who's the right person for, let's say, approaching the beer and napkins process first? Like, what is that? What phase are, where are they, right? I mean, have they already done some market research? Have they maybe started thinking about some type of business plan? I mean, you know, just what's the rough ingredients that go into that where you're like, now's a good time for the conversation where you're using our resources and our expertise to kind of hammer out some things. I mean, what does that what does that look like in a general sense? I know it's not an exact science, perhaps, but like what what does that look like? I think anybody who has a uh, an idea that really has been they're passionate about, I think anybody in that zero stage, I think that is where we're navigating. That there are not a lot of funding. There's not a lot of um, uh, support in that phase, and we know that's a gap. 
And we want to make sure anybody who is interested, we want to nurture the ground, get it, uh, get them to go to those next levels. So I would say, uh, Adrian, it, it's it's the nuggets, it's the seeds, it's those elements, any any of those elements that they have an aspiration for. Again, we talked about those tinkerers, those maintenance individuals, and some of these uh, BMW suppliers, you know, and other other manufacturing areas where they, oh, man, I've been working with this and I've got this widget that is really helping me on my job and I'd like to commercialize those things. If they have a spark of that idea, I think that's where we want to target. I think that's so important to really given an opening, a portal, so their ideas can flourish and really ideate it, kind of get it in that really good form. And then as we move along in that pathway, and we kind of mapped out a little a visual of that pathway to get to that phase one, again, the phase one is where it's viable. It's, 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 it's a true product. And we want to just take them through that journey and, and really hand them off in those other platforms and other ecosystem partners through that journey. So again, front end feeder yeah. organization, that's what we really want to, to be at that front end area there. And it's so hard as, as Joey talked about it, it's, it's the cultural element from that side to somebody who is uh, in more of the middle phases is, is, is so different. And again, we are so resource rich and we're so people rich with ideas and there are all these latent ideas in the community. We just want to stir it up. I mean, we know our, we know our little element in the, in the field. We don't want to reinvent uh, a next or uh, a platform or some of the other ecosystem. That is not our purpose. Our purpose is really to to nurture that and really educate. It's almost a, it's almost like a literacy situation. We want to give that entrepreneurial literacy so they know the basics, so they can make their ideas flourish. I think that's a really important thing, though, because that's usually part of what's missing, right? I mean, and, and, and Joey, you talked about it too. Is there's not been really good, solid conversation to even challenge the idea and make them think more critically about it. Not that that idea is wrong or bad, but that might not be the thing that's going to take off for them. You know, that might not be the thing that that manifests that next step. But without that type of structured conversation and discovery, right, you just you sit there with a really great idea and it never goes anywhere or you try and take it somewhere that is going to be a fruitless pursuit, right? Which is a really defeating thing for someone who's just getting started. So I think it's a critical step and it's good to know that that early on, someone's going to be able to get that level of support and attention and conversation that should serve them in the long term. Now, when it comes to transitioning over to you, Joey, I mean, if I have a product and I've, I've talked to Phil and I've got something I think is viable. Like, what am I bringing to you? You know, what is, what are the raw materials I'm bringing to you to say, I want to, I want to prototype this. I want to make this. Do I need to come with my own drawings and everything already put together? I mean, what is, what does that process look like in the makerspace out of it? Yeah. So just as a little side, you know, you've seen those little bottles of like five hour energy drink. What we really need is like a bottle of five hour motivation drink. It can help people motivate towards doing this and uh, getting them in the door is is part of it. But what we have is is a uh, kind of a, a roadmap. Uh, if somebody walks in the door, we have a roadmap of what to think about, what to consider, at what stage are you in figuring these things out uh, and it incorporates a bit of uh, business planning. Obviously, if if there's no customer, uh, you don't have a business, and so we help help people figure that out. If it's if it's a uh, you know if there's a customer involved, but for the most part, it's let's start asking some hard questions about what the process is. Let's let's get your vision out of your head and onto paper and make a plan and make a, a design of something that's actionable because we're going to go over there in the shop and we're going to turn on a piece of machinery and we're going to cut something and we need to know exactly how big to cut it. So, so there's a lot of hard work that is getting ideas out of the head and getting them into reality. And sometimes it's, it's not feasible. Sometimes we're, you know, bending the laws of physics and reality. And that's, that's a hard thing to help someone get through understanding that their baby is not going to make it and that it's not their fault. It is their opportunity to exercise their 
entrepreneurial spirit to try something else if they need to fail often. Let's quit. Let's find out if this is not going to work really fast because time is ticking and you might like the next, the third or the fourth or the fifth idea down the line may be a home run hit. So let's, let's get through the failures quickly. And, I, and there's a lot of people that are, have fear of failure and they have, they have so much faith and trust in what they think might be great that they miss out understanding that what's great is their ability to create and their ability to pursue an idea. And again, that motivation part, I got all the tools, I have the workspace, I have all of the stuff there for them. But if they don't have the motivation to, to like move through it, I, I don't have a bottle of motivation drink. <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah, that could be a game changer, right? You know, we, we were, we're kind of, we've toyed around how to hand this off and for years, right, Joey, what the most appropriate thing. And we, we've built a few questions around that motivation. You know, uh, do, do you have that specific idea? So really kind of formalizing it. And as, as Joey said, we're trying to build like uh, coasters with the QR codes and things that kind of vets that idea on a kind of a digital platform to kind of vet it, kind of get that, uh, you know, do you want to take your idea further? And from, from the beer and napkin session to the, to more the diving into that. So we're trying to, again, build that digital infrastructure to do that. Uh, interesting point about this journey, this, uh, this, it's interesting that we don't have statistics of where these entrepreneurs come from and the success of these journeys throughout. Uh, I mean, we, we, we looked right, Joey, and look throughout South Carolina, where is the statistics of these homegrown entrepreneurs? There's none. So part of our, our goal is to start tracking some things with this, this infrastructure to say, hey, this was an idea. This is this is was successful in this pathway and then provide statistics to our other from our customer side is again the emerging entrepreneur, the phase zeros, and also the ecosystem partners is also a customer for us as well and provide them data from that aspect as well. So really it's interesting. We're, we're all focused on informality and that that's our drive, just sketching things in pubs and uh, breweries and things. But we really, are really deeply trying to understand uh, the data around these things and really understand how we can use that more effectively in nurturing this entrepreneur ecosystem. And I think, it makes our organizations more viable and to organizations like yourself. This is what we're getting. This is, so we're striving. That's, that's our future plans is to really coordinate that data collection effort as well, just for the support, the feedback and improvement in this system itself. And again, it's such an organic um, uh, front end system, but we feel the need that we need to evolve into that as well. So I don't enjoy if you want to expand on that thought. We've really thought about that a long time. Yeah, that's there are statistics that are uh, become much more valuable when you add a time factor to them. You know, knowing how many how many entrepreneurs are active right now is is one part of the statistic. Uh, if you if you keep track over four or five or six or ten years, that data is is much more valuable. Uh, you know, we we forget to do that. I've, I've forgotten to do that many years of, of Synergy Mill. It was, we were scrapping so hard to stay alive that we forgot to write things down. And of course, you know, uh, the difference between science and goofing off is writing things down. And so <laughs> we, we've kind of missed out on a lot of that historical data that I think would be very valuable now. And it would help, help give some insight as to how we better help people you know, what works and what doesn't work and, and uh, uh, you know, how, how to deal with moving people along through the ecosystem and how to connect them better. Yeah, the data collection piece of it is, I, that, that really could, to your point, give you some ideas of, of where there's gaps or, you know, but I mean, when you're in it, in the moment, it's very hard to, to kind of say, let's sit down and start collecting this data, right? It's like, we really just want to see this be successful. But I think in the future, I mean, what you're doing with, you know, the idea vetting with the, the AI and that, I mean, that's a, that's a really cool approach to the ideation piece of it and giving people some perspective on viability. I love that. But then also 
the data sharing around kind of that progression could be really insightful. And to your point, could definitely serve the broader ecosystem because there's so many other people that are touching elements of that that journey, right? And you might have people that are starting with some ideas and then they're proliferating other ideas and they're growing and doing lots of different things. And until you have those data points, it's hard to see what direction people went and what sort of drove that to happen. But it's exciting that you guys are going to start trying to collect and put that together in a meaningful way and share that with a broader set of partners, which I think could could get everybody together to support it better. Um, Because we really do want new business and we want to see, you know, our state growing and and thriving, regardless of whether it's in tech or it's in, you know, manufacturing, we want to see all sectors grow. So I think that's that's a really exciting prospect to start putting something together, even at a at a basic level, right? Like you said, just specific data points that give you some some idea of what's happening throughout that process is valuable, right? Because it paints a picture, right? And I think that's a really important thing for this this area of business that's just really a bit of a blind spot for us is the entrepreneur, that very early phase stuff that we don't get to see. We see it when they make it and it's, it's out there, but everything before then is a bit hidden. So I think that's awesome what you guys are doing. And before we wrap up, I just, I wanted to give each of you an opportunity to kind of I mean, share any advice or um, if you've got something that you're like, this is just a standout moment and what I'm doing and I, it it makes the work that much more fulfilling. I mean, I wanted to give you just a, each of you a moment to kind of share a message, whether it's insight and advice or something that really just keeps you going because of a success that you've seen or, or something that's really brought back, you know, this is my mission. This is why I'm doing this. I'd love for you to be able to share that with listeners before we close out today. So, I mean, Joey, I'll, I'll start with you. Anything you want to share? Oh, yeah, thank you. In the times that I've been speaking here, I'll, I'll come right back again to the importance of relationships, the importance of being a friend, the importance of, of being nurturing to each other and to, to help break down barriers uh, to opportunities. That I think is is like super key to all of this. It's being open to share, to trust and to reach out and even reach into, we didn't really talk about this, reach into the young generations that are coming up and showing them that manufacturing is is a very viable, necessary thing that we need engineers and we need developers and we need all of the things that manufacturing involves to grow that, that part of our industry. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a big thing in South Carolina to, to bring that manufacturing up and bringing it back. And we have those opportunities now, and it's about, opening that those opportunities up and sharing with the next generations and being a friend and have and developing those relationships and that's really my bottom line let's let's open up and develop and shift our thinking to an open stance to to pull people in and then i think the ideas will flow from there the results will happen from that those relationships yeah i like that what about you phil what have you got? Almost just a simple statement here. It all starts with a napkin. So <laughs> I um, really uh, want to advocate, use your pub time wisely and get get your colleagues together. Go to this third place, not your home, not your work. Get into informal environments and let your thoughts and creativity get nurtured and continue that. It's not all about the scale. It's, a, it's about this idea and these nuggets and you eventually want to scale, but you iterate. This is where the, 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 the moment you need that, com, that com, uh, divergent thinking, you need that creative space to clear your ideas and clear your mind and have that time to really creatively nurture those ideas. So get in your pub, get in your, your favorite coffee shop, and get your colleagues together and start that idea. That would be my advocation. I really appreciate it, guys. This has been so much fun to talk about. And we'll be sure to share some of these links to organizations that you talked about and reference. We'll we'll definitely share that in our episode notes as well, because I think it's just so terribly important that this becomes more visible. And, you know, we appreciate everything that you guys are doing to to nurture that entrepreneurial spirit and, and drive more business growth and development here in South Carolina. And just thank you so much for for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Adrian. Yeah, thank you.
Thanks for listening to this episode of the 6Ms of Manufacturing podcast. Special shout out to Phil McCright and Joey Lohman for sharing information about their partnership and resources available to support entrepreneurs in South Carolina. Visit the episode notes for details and reference links to information and resources shared during this discussion. Did you like what you heard? That's awesome. Follow our podcast and share with your network. And remember, don't just make it, make it better.